Hey everybody, Eric here with Switch Adapted Toys and today I'm going to be walking you through how to adapt the Fisher-Price DJ Bounce and Beats. Uh, he's a really fun toy. He jumps up and down, sings songs, a lot of noise, a lot of motion. Our kids seem to love it. Uh, you can even record your voice and it can like add it to a song and stuff like that. So it's a really good toy to adapt. Uh, it's not that hard. I'll walk you through the whole process. Uh, and if you like this content, Please like this video and subscribe to our channel. It really does help us support our mission of making play possible. So without further ado, we're gonna get into it. All right, so we're gonna start with the toy on its belly and we need to remove all of the screws in the back of the toy. Uh, don't worry about getting the, the screws off of the battery co compartment, just all the other screws on the back. So in order to get this toy adapted, we actually will need a special screwdriver. It is a TA 2.3. Uh, I believe they're all color coded, so if you look for a green tip, you should be fine. Um, it is a little triangle bit, it looks something like that. Uh, you will need it, there's only two screws on this thing that has this special screw in it, but uh, you will need it in order to get the toy open and for us to adapt it. We will have a link to the uh, place where you can buy it on Amazon and link in the description. Uh, so you can go ahead and pick one up if you don't have one already. So you'll need the TA 2.3 on these bottom screws here. All right, so with all the screws um, out, now we can go ahead and separate the two halves of the toy. Alright, so the base will come off, you can just set that aside, uh, and if you want to, you can remove the ears, not necessary, but it just kind of helps get things out of the way. And we can go ahead and remove the buttons up top. Alright, so in a second, we're going to solder our headphone jack wires to a couple different places on this board. And uh, based off of what you want this toy to do, you're gonna solder them in different places and I'm gonna go over all those options with you. So before we do this, we need to get our headphone jack wire prepped. So we'll move everything aside and get that going. So here's our headphone jack wire. The first thing we need to do is remove the casing on uh, the wire and we'll just use some wire strippers to remove that. So all these headphone jacks are a little different. Uh, ours is a stereo headphone jack. So we've got three wires. We've got a bare copper wire, we've got a red wire, and we've got a white wire. Um, if I were to just snip off all these bare wires, uh, that some switches may not work properly with this headphone jack. So in order to make sure everything works well together, I'm going to combine all these bare copper wires uh, with the red wire, and I'll show you how to do that. First, I'm gonna gather up all the copper wires and just kind of grab the end and twist, twist it all together. Okay, and then I'm gonna strip off a good chunk of this red wire and I'm gonna twist those together. All right, and then I'm gonna remove just the tip off of the white wire. Now you could use wire strippers for this, but I find that you could just use your fingernail most of the time. So this is all great, except we've got a bunch of exposed wire here that we need to protect so it doesn't accidentally short something out. So you can use electrical tape and just wrap some tape around there and just leave the tip exposed. Or better yet, you can use heat shrink wire covers and I'll show you how to do that. All right, so here's our heat shrink wire cover. Come in a bunch of different sizes. You just wanna make sure you get the right diameter. Uh, you don't want it too loose. Uh, these things are super cheap. You can pick some up on Amazon or whatever. I'll put some links in the description. Uh, you just want to cut it to size so that it just leaves the tip exposed on that red and copper wire. And then all you do is slip the wire cover over the wire. Push it all the way down. Oh, I need to cut some more off of that one. All right, push it all the way down and then we're gonna use a heat gun to shrink this wire cover. 
All right, just like that, we're good to go. So we've got our headphone jack wire prepped. Now what we need to do is figure out a way for this to get into the toy. So uh, we've done this before, so we know that we need to actually put a hole into the button that we're going to adapt. Hey everybody, Eric from the future here. Uh, our headphone jack wires are a little short. That is why we went through the button. But if you've got long enough headphone jack wires, uh, it's even better just to go through the side of the head of the toy. Uh, we've done them both ways. And honestly, the side of the head might work a little bit better, but this is just what we had to do for the length of wire that we had. Let me grab a drill with the right proper size bit to accommodate our headphone jack. And uh, we'll show you where we're gonna do that. All right, so I've got my button. And what I wanna do is I want to drill my hole kind of, you can see this, this button kind of has four quadrants, let's call it. We want to drill in this top quadrant here. Uh, so I got my drill. I'm just going to carefully drill a hole. All right, just like that. Now we've got our hole for our headphone jack. Um, there's not a lot of room in this toy for our wire, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna snip off a little bit of this button just to make a little extra space. So you can use, um, what I've got is just some wire snippers and they seem to work all right. I'm just gonna cut a little bit of this toy button off just to give us a little more space allow the wires to kind of fit through there. You don't want to leave any like sharp edges. So I've got a little point there. I'm going to try to take off. Alrighty, and that should, that should be fine. That should be enough. Um, so now we are ready to fish our headphone jack wire through our hole that we drilled. Alrighty, and we're going to secure the inside with a zip tie. The zip tie will just help from anyone accidentally yanking on this cord from pulling the whole thing out and disconnecting our wire. So I find that the smaller the zip tie, the better. Um, it just seems to grab on to the wire a little easier. And then we're gonna cinch down this zip tie as, as much as we possibly can. Make sure it's good and tight and we can go ahead and clip off any extra zip tie just like that and you give it a good tug make sure it's not going to go anywhere um, and this should be set we should be ready to solder all right so for the first thing i like to do before i uh, solder the wires to the board is i like to get a little bit of solder on the wires themselves uh, it just makes it a little easier once i try to get everything into place that i've got a little solder on the wire so uh, as soon as my soldering iron heats up, I'm going to get some solder on here and I'll show you that. All right, so I've got my wire, I've got my iron nice and hot. All I'm going to do is bring in the solder, touch it to the iron and that kind of melts the solder and I'm just going to basically almost like paint it on, just going up. Now I am not an electrician. Uh, I but you know, this is not hard, you can do this. Someone in the comments is probably gonna say, I'm the worst solder alive, and, and I could be, but it doesn't really matter. As long as it works, uh, the toy, <laughs> it'll be fine. You'll be fine. This is not rocket science. You can definitely do it. So I've got some solder in my wires, now I'm ready to get it onto the board. I'm gonna snip off a little bit of this extra wire on this one, just because it's a little long. Now, it doesn't matter which one of these wires I solder to the node, different node. You just wanna make sure that no solder is, is touching both um, or like touching another node. You wanna just make sure everything is just kind of by itself. There's no crossover. Otherwise, the toy will just constantly be going off. So regardless of which button you wanna adapt, we're gonna to solder one of our headphone jack wires to the far right node. If you want your toy to do the voice recorder, you're gonna solder it to the next one over, right there. 
right there. If you wanted to do the ABC one, two, three, you're gonna do it to the next one. And if you wanted to do the song, which is what we're gonna do, we're gonna solder it to the far outside one. All right, so I got my wire soldered on and we're gonna go ahead and give it a test. So I plugged in a switch and I turned the power on. Now this motor here is gonna spin around, so just make sure it's not gonna hit anything or tear your wires out. Uh, but go ahead and give it a test, make sure it works. Oh, here we go. There we go. So at this point, let me turn this thing off before it dances off the table. Uh, at this point, we can go ahead and put everything back together and um, should be all set. So I'll show you how to get it all back together and we'll be done. All right, so we'll start with our buttons. We wanna get our buttons back into place. They only go one direction, so it should be pretty easy to figure out which one goes where. Uh, the blue one goes in the middle and you kinda hook the other buttons onto it and then they all kinda slide into place. And But because we cut out that extra spot, the buttons won't hit on our soldering points, so we should be good there. So if you took your ears out, we need to get these back into place. The ABC ear goes on to the right side of the toy. And the one, two, three goes on the left. I don't know if it really matters. You could probably put them on backwards and it would probably be fine. All right, so this is kind of the trickiest part of the build. <laughs> it hasn't been that hard yet, so a challenge is always good. Uh, we need to put this base on the unit and kind of close the back all at the same time without uh, dropping any ears or buttons or anything like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of hold the back of the toy up and I'm gonna slide my spring into place. Now there's a little notch on the spring right here and that kind of goes on the front side of the toy. So there's just a little slot where that goes into. See, I lost my buttons. Slide those back on, get everything into place. And then try to close everything up, making sure we're not pinching any wires or the ears, for example. So I kind of had to, my ears are getting pinched a little bit, so you gotta make sure that those are in the holes, that way it will totally seat together. All right. Now I got the back back on and we can go ahead and screw it back down. Remember that your specialty screws, the TA 2.3, uh, go in the bottom two screw holes. There's two and then the rest are just standard Phillips head. We just go around and make sure everything gets screwed back down. If you are using a power drill, just make sure you're not over tightening. Crack the plastic or strip out the screws. We don't really want that. All right, so let's see if it works. I got the power on. I'm gonna plug my switch in and we'll give it the button to press and see if it works. Ready to dance? Excellent. All right, so that's basically it. Uh, real easy toy to do, no major problems. Um, as long as you've got that specialty screwdriver, it's a piece of cake, you, you can definitely do it. Uh, and it's a good toy to adapt as well. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. It helps us out in a huge way. Uh, if you've got a group or an organization and you're interested in forming what we call a switch chapter, um, I'll put a link in the description below. Basically, we, tr we help, we have a ton of resources to help groups and organizations um, adapt a lot of these toys and give them away out to kids in their community. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, check the link below, and uh, I guess that's it. Until next time, we'll see you, and take care. Switched.
Adapted Toys, making play possible.